For decades, the military ruled Myanmar with an iron fist. It drove the country's economy to ruin and cracked down hard on dissent. It stepped down from day-to-day -day control of the country in 2011. But the military remains a power behind the scenes and former generals still make all the key decisions. Of course, it's not the same military. The previous junta was accused of widespread human rights violations and today's leaders allow far more freedom. Still, many people had hoped that the military and its allies would share more power in the new Myanmar. So it's very much a, a top-down, military-designed uh, transition uh, that we saw. Generals are guaranteed a quarter of seats in parliament. That gives the military a veto over significant political changes. Nearly all top ministerial positions are held by current or former soldiers. The military remains secretive. Its representatives and several military legislators declined requests to be interviewed. Earlier this year, the military used its veto power to block proposed constitutional changes that would have reduced their share in parliament. They've also refused to amend a section of the constitution that blocks opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi from becoming president. The ruling military-linked Union Solidarity and Development Party recently deposed its former chairman amid fears he was distancing the group from senior generals. Minong Lang, the commander-in-chief, says the military will uphold results of the November election. But he insists the transition must be carefully managed and that Myanmar, for now, must be a disciplined democracy in which the military plays a key role. There are certain measures that ensure that the military has a place within the, the political order. Uh, and more importantly, getting them out of those uh, roles is not so easy. And that, that has always been clear.